You're listening to the Stoic Solutions Podcast, practical wisdom for everyday life inspired by the ancient philosophers of Greece and Rome. I'm your host, Justin Vakula. Visit my website at stoicsolutionspodcast.com. This is episode 96, Peter Stankiewicz, Stoicism in a Pandemic. We talk about mental health, the importance of a strong mindset and how to cultivate it, flexibility, personal responsibility, moderation, and how to live a fulfilling life. Peter is a philosopher, author, and teacher specializing in Stoicism, based in Warsaw, Poland. He writes in English and in Polish, captivated by the idea that Stoicism is not only a school of philosophy from a classics textbook, but a viable philosophy of life for modern times. He is a member of the Modern Stoicism Team, an international network of scholars and authors promoting Stoic philosophy. In 2019, with Vernon Press, he published Does Happiness Write Blank Pages? on Stoicism and Artistic Creativity. His book, A Manual of Reformed Stoicism, was published in 2020. See show notes for links to his websites, Facebook page, and contact information. On with today's episode. All right, thank you for joining me today. A return to the podcast. We're still in the pandemic, <laughs> but we're still here virtually. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. Uh, hello. So, and yes, the pandemic is kind of... Uh, <laughs> is still with us or with uh, or we are still with it so yeah the situation a lot has changed and nothing has changed is the same <laughs> yes and we'll talk about that today so for people who didn't listen to our first conversation or maybe who are new to the podcast can you give a quick description of stoicism particularly the way that you envision it in your idea of reformed stoicism a brief description this is this is worth an entire meeting an hour <laughs> long so uh, basically, the idea is that uh, for like the, the absolute very basics is that from my point of view, uh, Stoicism is a school of thought, a philosophical school, school of life, which was, uh, which was invented in ancient Greece uh, 23 centuries ago. Uh, and is still very interesting. But if we want to keep it interesting, if we want to keep it valid and relevant to our modern life, we need to... Um, we need a number of uh, changes, recalibrations, reinterpretations, or uh, if I, uh, as I call it, reformation, because uh, a lot of things, uh, un unlike COVID, <laughs> unlike the, the pandemic situation, uh, since since antiquity, since Marcus Aurelius, a lot of things have changed, and we need to adapt, adjust, and uh, kind of recalibrate. Or, in other words, we need to. Uh, we need to express the ancient Stoic doctrines in our contemporary langu language and contemporary um, uh, mindset. Uh, and in my case, it takes the form of uh, the so-called Reformed Stoicism. Uh, as you can see already, I can talk and talk about that. So just please feel free <laughs> to interrupt at any moment. Sure, sure. So you're, you're talking about having this uh, mi mindset, a strong mindset. We're talking about courage. We're talking about fortitude. We're talking about seeing reality as it actually is. So stoicism can help us with that. This is this is basically one of the kind of this key premises that if we want to use stoicism as an actual philosophy of life for our life today here uh, in the 21st century and for you know my own personal life, your life, and so on, uh, we need to we need a certain mindset. We need to treat. Stoicism, not just you know some kind of a chapter in the in the in the textbook of history of philosophy, but as a living doctrine which can and should be applied, and therefore we need to you know uh, we need to we need to apply it to our life. And the, the the proof of the pudding is in the eating, and the the proof of stoicism is in action in actual life. This is this is this is the approach here. Right, and the ancients got a lot right about human psychology and about making progress, about just being mindful, being in the present and just taking time to reevaluate our beliefs and the things that we know. We're not to just know things because of tradition or because someone else said so, but rather to take a, an honest, open-minded evaluation. Yes, absolutely. Uh, this, and this is, this is actually one point, what, actually perfectly in the, in, in, the, in the line of conversation here, because what you said that the ancient Stoics had a lot right about how, you know, psycholog psychologically, how human mind works. It turns out that uh, today in the 20th and the 21st century, uh, modern science, modern psychology and psychoanalysis, they 
it turns out that the ancient Stoic, uh, uh, the ancient Stoics were right from the scientific pr modern perspective, and this is the one of the key things that uh, are you know <laughs> this is this is nice that after this is this is a this is a cool fact that after uh, you know uh, several hundreds of hundreds of years of uh, development of science and psychology, finally it turns out the, that back in, back in the day the ancient Stoics were right. So this is a cool fact. This is this is good, but also. When, when I'm talking about, you know, uh, the approach today and my modern, my, my reformed stoicism, the thing is that uh, we need one of the, uh, again, one of the, the basic tenets here is that we need to take into account all the facts, developments, and everything that happened between us and, and the ancients. We need to kind of factor that in. And one of the absolutely fundamental facts that happened uh, in, the, in the last two millennia is that uh, science was established and developed and, and, and that it grew to the position it, it occupies today. And therefore we need to, in, in, in stoicism today, we need to take into account the scientific worldview. When you talk about, uh, the ancients talk, talk a lot about the, you know, conformity with nature, following nature, using nature as kind of a, you know, guiding principle. Uh, I do not really believe in that in the literal sense, but if we want to apply that to our life today, it turns out that being, uh, as Professor Becker, Larry Becker would say, uh, agreement with facts is the contemporary uh, kind of a translation of, of the idea of following nature and follow, you know, and, this is, and it is science that provides us with facts and the basic understanding of facts on which we, uh, we build our uh, ethical decisions and our, you know, life decisions. So, you know, factoring in all that scientific knowledge. Yes, this is, this is a, this is a key thing here. Right. And now we can apply many of these lessons to the current pandemic. We're seeing the Stoics talk to a lot of us being social animals and being part of a larger community. And now with many shelter in place restrictions, not having the social engagement, we're seeing a lot of mental health issues come up. So while, OK, maybe we're not all, all out there in public, there are still some negatives that are coming with this this lockdown. Um, just just a survey of things I, I've been seeing some suicidal ideation across many feeds. Uh, presumably we'll see things like domestic violence or some interpersonal violence. Yeah. Yes, that's the problem. So yeah, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot to unpack here. So where can I start? Yeah. Oh, first of all, this uh, shelter in place. I mean, the phrase, this is, I believe this is American phrase. It, it, I just love the, 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 the sound of, the, <laughs> of this expression. This is, this is nice. Uh, so, uh, with, with the pandemic, it kind of happens on two levels or on so many levels. I mean, basically what you, what you said, the, the social thing that uh, the pandemic somehow happens on this kind of gray area between, uh, between politics, government and whatever, and science, right? Public health and so on. And this is this kind of a interplay of political decisions, uh, uh, which should be based on facts and on on, on science, but often aren't. Uh, and on the on the other hand, the the, uh, the realm of uh, of healthcare, the entire system of you know uh, what the doctors can and cannot do, the hospitals and so on and so on. So this is kind of a complex situation, uh, and the um, so to speak, the, our how we how we respond to the um, to to those uh, guidelines to do what to do about wearing masks about keeping the social distance and so on and so on and so on and this is in a way uh, a great uh, a great uh, field of application of stoicism because basically I, I believe that you cannot be in 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 in, in stoicism if you want to be stoic today you cannot be uh, non-scientific. I mean, you need to accept what science tells you, and not in a kind of the easy, cheap, you know, uh, way like in the in the in this you know uh, scientific churches or, or 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 whatever. But the basic, obvious facts that uh, are there, like that you need to wear the mask, that you need to keep the distance, and so on and so on and so on, to prevent the spread of the of, of the disease. These are the things that we should be doing, and this is basically what what a stoic uh, would tell you in this situation. And this this is the this is the social level how a society how this society reacts to, 
to this situation on the personal level which is equally important or even more <laughs> even more important uh the, the how you react i mean you need i mean as an individual you need to do all those things wear the mask and so on and so on but the aspect of the mental health problem this is something that people i, I believe uh, and again this is of course where stoicism can be brought to life with full full force uh, this is something very often quite neglected that that a part of the regular health problems that the regular health crisis so to speak that uh, that the pandemic uh, pandemic creates there is a major problem with mental health care and this is immediately i would just say yes i agree 100 percent the rise of domestic violence the rise of uh, you know all sorts of problems suicidal thoughts all, all that stuff this is from from kind of day one i i, I saw this coming and uh, what i don't like is that you know the politicians and the system kind of do not take that into account as much as they should. But but I believe we are kind of drifting from stoicism to the to this issue. But basically, yes, this is a perfect uh, perfect area where stoicism can and should be applied. And and uh, if I were to give some you know specific advice, advice number one would be do not uh underestimate or as the, the the verb goes do not misunderestimate uh the, the the gravity of the situation i mean gravity of the situation we are not going to die the the light or the you know the human civilization will not end because of of the of the pandemic but it is very serious and the impact on on every individual mind every individual life is heavy and we need to not neglect that this is absolutely number one thing just playing it lightly as a, is a very dangerous choice right and the the mask issue has been a contentious one <laughs> for different reasons and there's talk of us not living in a vacuum that our impact our actions impact others a common theme within stoicism exactly so if we can do this social distancing as you mentioned we can wear masks that's going to hopefully slow the spread, right? Not being infecting others, not ourselves being infected. A lot of reasons that we can see for that. A slight inconvenience, I think, for me, I'll, I'll be happy to wear it around when I'm on the go. Yes, exactly. I mean, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the issue of wearing or not wearing masks is actually a brilliantly clear and brilliantly good manifestation of the uh, kind of very visual, because you need to cover a face, uh, manifestation of the problem of responsibility that my the, the very basic idea right not 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 in stoicism only but basically in ethics that our actions have effect on others it is not i am it is not uh, it, it is not me that is involved in the in the effects of my actions but others too and this is kind of visible right when our if i cover my face then i'm trying at least trying to be responsible for others and denying this uh, cause effect chain here is is very dangerous uh so yeah obviously this is that do you have thoughts on people having stronger mental fortitude during these times you you hinted at oh well don't think this is going to be a disaster this is not the worst situation that's possibly going to happen to us hopefully we can uh make make something good of this this time sheltered in place i will start with myself and in my case you know just the personal because basically uh, what's interesting in Stoicism is that this is kind of an intersection of a you know, philosophical thing, a personal endeavor, and also this kind of, you know, what try to proliferate the, the attempt to proliferate these ideas. And this kind of happens on in many different ways. So to explore this personal thing, in my case, uh, we've been uh, on lockdown for, for quite a few months and we are, you know, working remotely since, since March which is a serious change in the daily life to, to say the least and i believe in my uh, uh, i i realized that this will be a problem uh early on and i was trying to keep my mental stoic you know fortitude and you know do all those things to try to be immune to do to all these problems and uh just to illustrate what i said before I, I believe that for two or three months I was doing quite well. And then like later in June and then in July, I kind of, it, it, it started getting to me, right? So in this kind of delayed, you know, delayed cues effect. Uh, and this was a bit of a problem because I was already thinking that, yeah, okay, so stoicism kind of helped me uh, here. And then I 
the gravity of the, of the maybe not the gravity, but all those problems that I was trying to cordon off were kind of, uh, you know, surging back at me, uh, you know, in a, in, a, in, a, in a delayed fashion, which, and it caused certain, certain problems. Uh, but when you talk about people in general, I, I, I believe there is a, you know, manifestations, what, uh, what the pandemic showed us is the uh, kind of a, a very broad manifestations of what, uh, of how, how, how people react, because some people react with, uh, with fortitude, with, uh, with courage, and with this, you know, uh, willingness to wear those <laughs> bloody masks. And some people, you know, some people are, are are angry. Some people are surprised. Some people don't know what to do, and uh, and um, and respond and manifest that in in many crazy ways and uh, and uh, kind of unstable ways. And this is a problem, right? That's uh, because their decisions affect others so we have all sorts of uh, possible outcomes here i believe in, in my in my case stoicism definitely did help uh, for some time and then you know later later in the uh, later in the process i i had uh, i started having some of my own problems so you're never you're never fully safe right i even took a break here leaving my apartment went on a little bit of a road trip for a short time and came back just to change in the environment i think was a, a good reset for me for how long, if I may? Oh, ask. sure. It was two nights. Just to, okay. So yeah, basically, uh, uh, in my case, it happened back in, uh, in April, I believe, I mean, because we, we have this kind of stretch of time for like forty or fifty days, like one month and a half, that we didn't leave the uh, the premises basically at all. Oh. And then I, I do remember that the first maybe calling it a road trip is a bit of an overestimation but we kind of you know uh went we hit the road basically for a few hours and it was a you know very refreshing mm -hmm. thing right yeah a change a change Changing in circumstances your, environment uh, which basically is a proof that, uh, that that this is a serious thing right just staying at home turns out to be a very revolutionary act very serious very serious challenge uh, and 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 in a way, a paradox here is that uh, we need, we are we are supposed and we are you know we are expected to show this solidarity and responsibility and so on and so on. But on the very practical level, it reveals itself it it sells through keeping uh, keeping the distance right. So I'm showing that I'm responsible for our brothers and the members, a responsible member of society, and so on, by staying a part of others, which is basically <laughs> paradox, right? Right. Yeah. So the the stoic metal can be tested. Uh, there, there's talk that nobody's going to be perfect, and that's all right. But it's a good thing if we can recognize if okay, we're starting to slip, we're starting to feel a little bit agitated, that we don't go from like one to ten and start like punching walls or other destructive things, right? So that stoic mindfulness is going to be helpful. Yes, I mean, the uh, the thing with stoicism, I believe, is that it is usually, when people think about um, stoicism, be it ancient or being, being modern, uh, usually stoicism is, is conceptualized as, as kind of an armor or a device that will help you uh, you know, combat the adversities of fortune, right? Be it COVID, be it uh, the, uh, some other disease, be it a problem with this or problem with that, be it, a, uh, you know, um, some financial difficulty or, 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 or you name it. Uh, but the thing is that stoicism is much wider. What is, in, what interest, what, what kind, of, kind of, basically what brought to me, brought me to stoicism uh, is that it can be applied if you apply it consistently the way it was invented and and, and designed. If you apply it consistently, you can and you will uh, you know flourish and uh, improve your well-being in very many different you know behaviors, walks of life, and so on and so on. It is not actually it, 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 the, the the point here is that it is not the a philosophy of self-defense it is much more consistently using that particularly in the time of covid uh, it kind of allows you to at least to try to not just you know survive as the saying goes not just survive but thrive right maybe thriving in a different way basically the idea of uh, staying at home and do your work remotely and not doing some parts of your work which cannot be done remotely, but doing some other things, you know, this kind of recalibration of life. This is also 
a very in very important part of uh, of stoicism to me i mean if you ask me what's what are the differences between uh reformed stoicism and the and the ancient doctrine the original doctrine this would be basically one of the things i would say or that you know first of all you know i don't trust nature as much as marcus aurelius did uh, but aside that uh, aside from that uh, the idea that we need to be kind of more flexible more 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 kind of self uh, self inventing in the way that if uh, if the circumstances change for example covid comes and we are you know <laughs> shelter in place and that stuff uh, then i need to think about my life in a different way and this is how this is this is how stoicism helped me that uh that I realized that I can follow my my values and goals in a, in a different way, and that the, it's only my it's it's just my responsibility to be flexible, and to you know change the course of my you know daily actions to to adapt the situation. This is basically uh, stoicism. I'm that I'm not uh, you know giving up because I know that I uh, that I have other fish to fry i have other things that i can do common theme in stoicism that we change our roles throughout life that maybe at one point we'll be in one station maybe we'll have children maybe we'll be working a certain job maybe we'll be finding a new vocation and that's okay as the idea is to have this stable set of values and a good a good lifestyle and we can adapt that regardless of what's happening in the world and the other theme of just life being fragile, that things are just possibly changing and we can't depend on life being the same forever. Uh, you, can, you cannot depend because life will you know, always change. Uh, about the, these values you mentioned, this stable set of values, uh, the thing is that, of course, it needs, you, it needs to be somehow stable, somehow coherent. You, know, you, you, you cannot change. You shouldn't reverse your values and goals in life like, uh, every other Tuesday, uh, but you need to. In my understanding of stoicism, we need to be. Uh, we need to remember. We need to realize that it is us who define these values uh, and goals in life. Right? If my goal in life is to, or if I have this project of, you know, uh, trying to be a stoic and teaching others how to be stoics, it is me. It is my personal decision, my personal responsibility for that, right? Uh, if my project is to, you know, teach myself to be a, you know, a businessman or, or, or whoever else, it is my own decision. The, of course, the circumstances, conditions, uh, the culture that you're, you know, brought up and everything that, uh, all, all that stuff, you know, it of course affects us in a great deal. There is no denying that, but the thing is, the thing is that the, the ultimate choice is made by us. If I go, if I engage with this stoic uh, path, so to speak, it is my decision. I need to be constantly aware that uh, that my values and goals in life are ultimately of my own choosing. Therefore, if something major happens, like the coronavirus, or if I, you know, change my my wor worldview, uh, then I can uh, adjust my goals and the values. This is this, this this element of personal, how can I put it? Personal responsibility, personal autonomy, personal um, flexibility too. Yeah. Flexibility, but 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 the the, the idea that uh, the, those uh, goals and values they do not come from outside. They do not. They are not defined by other people, by circumstances, circumstances, and so on and so on. This is a factor, but we are ultimately uh, responsible. This is something that I underscore a lot in my uh, in my uh, in my interpretation of stoicism, and this is something I believe where where I you know quite differ from the ancients. I mean, th th I believe these are, uh, they would agree with me, of course, uh, and because I believe these were these intentions here, but uh, there is a slight change of, you know, of, uh, of, of shade here. Right, so we're not going to blame others or we're not going to say, oh, this situation is terrible, so I'm just going to give up or what can I do here? We're going to look for opportunity. We're going to look to thrive, as you said, rather than just, I'm going to sit and wait. <laughs> Uh, when you mentioned, you know, the idea of giving up or not giving up, uh, in my uh, 
in in my book on uh, in 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 the manual of reformed stoicism there is an there is a specific chapter devoted to this exact problem and it's called i, I believe uh, if i if i remember well it is uh, beware of treacherous constancy the idea that being constant and just kind of you know fixed all the time is it it can be dangerous it can be misleading because uh it is it is it is good to be you know to be to be a fighter it is good to you know keep up to your commitments and goals and so on and so on and so on but not giving up in this kind of stop when when it when not giving up becomes stubbornness and the the, the and there is actually nothing to gain from this project or or decision or or, or avenue in your life then it may, then then the, the 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 smart decision is to reconsider and this is something that i underscore that the stoics uh that the stoics are saying that you need to be reasonable that and this, this is this is present in epictetus that uh it is uh, very good and very uh, it's a very noble thing to be uh, adamant in your in your decisions but only if they are reasonable decisions to begin with right if they are silly or if the circumstances the circumstances change in a major uh, game changing way uh, then you need to you need to reconsider and this is something that is often missed i believe in in studies and, and therefore i'm trying to trying to to correct that right we don't want to be a stubborn fool that just because we said something on the record you know you, you hear this in politics oh he's a flip-flopper yes. he's changed his position flip-flopper <laughs> or, 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 or. Or, 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 or if, if you want to play with what we said, certain people not wearing masks uh, because they they just cannot adjust to the new situation and they are stubborn in this uh, in this problematic way. This is a this is again an example, I believe, of of this uh, of this behavior of this problem. Right. So we're to adapt to circumstances and try some new opportunities. There's a lot of talk about risk taking and managing risk because that. We're going to want to look for challenges. We're going to want to look to improve. This is this is basically a, a very modern talk. I mean, very modern language. But this the the idea is there in Seneca. This is not, not, nothing new. I, I I won't quote the exact words, uh, but there is an exact passage when he says that uh, it, it, even if a calamity strikes and it disables you from you know engaging in various walks of life and and kind of. Uh, and kind of blocks you from certain things in life, it will always uncover or, or at least leave a lot of other options still on the table. You just need to be flexible enough. And this flexibility in, the, in a more philosophical language takes form of this uh, kind of personal, uh, personal resp responsibility and personal self-creation of our values, goals, and so on, which we, which we then can adjust. Uh, and and the, the pandemic shows us that this is necessary. Right. Like I, I play poker at casinos, but now that's not really a thing. <laughs> so I've been. You played poker in casinos, but like for uh, just for curiosity, tell me something more. I mean, oh, how does it work? Is, is it just for fun or do you make money oh. or do you lose money? Oh, for sure. Making, yeah, for sure. Making money in the in the long run. And I was relying on that and saying, okay, that's a good portion of my income going to casinos, but now that's not a thing. So I've pivoted toward online play and focusing on some other projects, working on another podcast. I found a okay. lot of opportunity, mm -hmm. even at this time of mostly being home. And I've also exercised a lot of gratitude, being so happy to have a nice place, to have technology, to have a conversation like we're having today. <laughs> and uh, this, this, this pandemic could have been so, so much more difficult, I, I would say, maybe 20 years ago. But now with so many opportunities, uh, that would be something completely <laughs> else, like unimaginably else. It's something we. I, I'm not sure whether you know the folks in power would would decide on this lockdown thing and everything else if they knew that you know remote work is not possible at this point. At that point, so and again, this is, so this is a, this is uh, looking into the past, but looking into the future, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it, it, this will change a lot of things. For example, the remote work will be much more socially accepted, to, to say with the very least. Right? We just did it for four uh, so, months. We could do it some more, right? <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. So uh, and so so this is a, this is something something which uh, the Stoics do not, when it comes to this, you know, social ramifications ramifications like how specific culture changes in in response to an event like the pandemic and so on 
the styles do not really say much on these things. They are focused on the uh, again on, the, on this personal on what what you can do and what what you can do and through your relationships with others, not really about the, uh, the the course of history as a as a, a, a as a distinct thing uh, and uh, yeah but of course these things are interconnected right and there's quite a demand in stoicism at least through some facebook groups i've been interacting with seeing google trends a lot more interest yes. in stoicism in yes. this time obviously. what are what are your obviously. thoughts on that yeah. um that basically, this is a thing, right? That in uh, in, a, in in difficult times, people turn to, to stoicism, uh, because again, this is the stereotype that uh, stoicism is basically a philosoph- philosophy for defense and how to be brave in you know, difficult circumstances, which is kind of simplifying and uh, and uh, oversimplifying stoicism because it is much wider, much right, broader, right. and so on. But still, this idea serves as a good uh, marketing thing. For stoicism because it is always somehow the the the, the association remains is lasting and uh, and in difficult times people turn to turn to stoicism but it is not only now i mean this turn to stoicism this this is this you know um revival of stoicism that, it, that has been happening for at least 20 30 years uh, this research of interest in stoicism is a uh, you know has been around for for a while it's not just the it's not just the pandemic. Some will say that you know the uh, realities of uh, of capitalism and of the uh, of, uh, of of the modern life, which is you know technology is great. Of course, we can talk. Uh, there is no problem that there is an ocean between us. Uh, but on the other hand, there it causes you know a lot of problem. Connected but distracted. You know the the pace of life. The uh, you know how many how many emails and how many notifications you get every day and how fast it changes you know in a, in a few years you'll have you probably won't have zoom you will have something completely else and you have to <laughs> maybe the holograms all, all of the oh yeah, exactly right so we'd be sitting in a you, you'd be sitting there at the at, at that part of the room so, yeah uh, that would be that would be even even even, even greater uh, okay, so but basically we'll have to adjust, and that that's a, that's a stress. I mean, you and me, probably you for sure, uh, you will adjust. But imagine something, you know, like a senior citizen, seventy years old, or someone like that. This is a stress, right? It's more, it's much more demanding on them. Basically, modern life causes a lot of uh, you know, stress and 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 mental problems. Uh, and some will say that therefore this is the reason why stoicism. Uh, you know, is uh, gaining popularity these days, and uh, because it's not just me, there are many other authors, uh, you know, writing on stoicism. I've just made this kind of specific point that reform of stoicism is, you know, my way to go. But there are many other authors uh, also writing on stoicism, uh, and some will say that this is, you know, in the response to the craziness of the time we live in. Uh, but on the other hand, and this is pro- probably my my position, you know. In human life is is by definition uh, difficult. This is the metaphysical condition of uh, uh, of human life and human experience. That basically life sucks, right? <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> yeah. that that we all encounter problems, be it twenty uh, first century, be it fifteenth century, or or second century uh, BC. So this is a basically metaphysical problem. In our time, it takes form of just what what we said that. Uh, the the fast paced man in life yeah. of twenty first century, but you know it has always been a problem. It just took a different form. So it is no uh, it is no surprise that stoicism is around and has been with, with us uh, for you know more than two millennia because it definitely serves certain purpose and uh, and helps us right and many positives that come from it. What more of an ability to feel joy more reasons to find meaning in life, more reasons to wake up in the morning, as Marcus Aurelius was saying, man is not made to stay under the bed sheets <laughs> to get... Marcus Aurelius is not, to, for this, for the last one, Marcus is not the best example, I believe, because he <laughs> definitely had a problem with, uh, with uh, you know, starting his day. Uh, maybe not, maybe not, I mean, the starting his day in the sense of, going out and confronting uh, all the people and all the Irans that they have and so on and so on. Uh, but yeah, on the broader scale, this is basically the point. The, 
the entire goal of stoicism is to uh, you know help us live a more satisfying more more uh, more stable more happy and maybe even more creative more productive life uh, which is basically a problem of uh, of our of the time we live in and therefore there is no 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 surprise that stoicism is is popular uh, it's just you know it will um I can tell you that in my experience, and as, as I see it, it will never happen that you open up a book and then uh, and then you, you you read some pages and then you're you know, <laughs> there's some epiphany. It, it never happens that way. It's a perpetual process. I've been in, into studying for almost for 14 years, almost, and it's always this you know going up and down. It's always you're trying, you're trying, then you're failing a bit, and then you're failing better, then we're going up a level and 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 so on. this is this is always a process and you're uh, the, the the hope and the promises that uh that uh, in the in the in the general outcome you will be uh, you'll be better off and and basically i believe that i am better off much a lot uh, than I, I would do without stoicism and therefore that's why i'm you know preaching stoicism yes, yes. <laughs> uh, but of course i'm i i'm i am a world away from any kind of perfection or sure, or, sure. or anything like that it, it's always a it's always a present you know the more the higher you go the 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 more you uh you know the the, the more you see that there is both higher and and lower right you can if you fall it will be it will be more more pain right we're to be patient with ourselves to be humble and recognize even the smallest of gains that's that's a big Which improvement is absolutely a stoic line yeah. yes and and seneca wrote a lot about that that you that we are you know just you know these lowly guys uh trying maybe to do some stuff but <laughs> back in the day cato he was the big guy and he he really nailed that we can just you know we can just try we can only try and be some you know small figures uh in this racket but uh but the, the, this idea of humility really is the uh and this is very important that you, that you mentioned that because the idea that we are um that we will never be perfect stars that we will never be uh, fully independent from the outside circumstances and so on this idea is a part of stoicism itself so stoicism is self-aware that it is difficult and this is a good good way to go of course that uh because it, uh, we won't be that anxious if we if we fail right another practical application is having a frugal life and not putting so much desire into things and externals as the stoics have said if we can be happy with less we can have our basic needs met well, we don't have to be so slavish over, oh, well, I have to work this job that I don't like to buy this expensive car to keep up with the neighbors or for some sort of personal quest, right? If you want a very short answer, then the answer is yes. <laughs> uh, if you want a slightly longer answer, I mean, this, this is a complex issue and uh, because, yes, basically this is what the stories are saying and the, the example of na with the neighbor and keeping up and so it, it, it's obvious, right, that, you know, sticking in a job that you hate just so that you can buy an expensive car is basically so stupid that it's you know just off the chart right uh, but the thing is more complex when you i for instance i am uh, i i am kind of living a maybe not extremely frugal life but it, it is kind of I, I don't really like you know buying stuff and like you know things and and etc I, I bought like two books recently in the and 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 the and the, the, the gift for my daughter but basically i don't like buying stuff and this is not a source of happiness for me and it did it, like a decade ago it wasn't this way and this basically this is obviously a stoic influence and I, i'm trying i'm in a way over time i'm you know i am i'm reshaping my identity uh, so that it is less and less centered about material things in in life and this is basically of course a good way to go i believe and and the stoic thing as long as you are not uh, as as you as, as as long as you're not extreme because extreme in this racket, right. in this in this trade is not good and and essentially i wrote a lot about it i called it the ascetic misinterpretation of stoicism the idea that you are not that stoicism doesn't force you to live extremely simple extremely frugal life if you want to and this is marcus Aurelius. if you are living in the in the palace then you can live good in the palace whenever you live wherever you live and how uh, however money you have 
um, it is possible to be okay with that. You need to, you don't have to sell everything you have. You don't have to, you know, live on the bench in the park and that kind of stuff. You can live contentedly whatever your, uh, you know, social status and financial status is. It is, it is very important that you need to, that, uh, uh, you don't have to, um, of course, it is, you know, better to be able to be, uh, to, to enjoy the simple things. Uh, but the, 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 the idea uh, is not that we have to, you know, just limit ourselves to, the, to, to bread and water. That's not the, that's not necessarily the way to go. Right. There's talk of moderation, not living a life of squalor, not living a life of vanity. Right. So it falls somewhere in the middle. And it's it's an interesting thing because people are making seven figures, eight figures, upper six figures, and they're still unhappy. And some of these people are still broke somehow. We, we hear this in at least in the States about these celebrities, these athletes, they make all of this money and then they spend it all and then they owe money. And then they just get in this really bad situation because they weren't managing life very well or they just went on this big spending spree buying all these unnecessary yeah, exactly and this is this is basically the most uh the, this is the best example here they, they, they those athletes who earn like uh millions of dollars or dozens of millions of dollars and uh, and then they they i i i, I just can, can't imagine it's just so distant from me uh, both um both economically and philosophically i, I just can't imagine that you have like you know millions of dollars and then you 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 do what you buy stuff you buy so much stuff that you empty your account for if you even if you have 10 million dollars it's just so crazy uh, but beyond that craziness there's of course a, a, a an obvious problem because if you do that uh, this means that you in a way you define your own value you do define you, you your your identity so to speak is tied to the things you possess to the things you can buy. You are defined by what you can buy. And this is the absolute opposite of stoicism. There will be things around you. You have to use money if you wanted to live in the in the system. Uh, you have to use money, you'll have to buy things and so on and so on. But as long as as they don't define you, you will be good. You'll be okay. Maybe you have five things around you maybe you have five thousand but if they don't define you you'll be good this is the this this is the actual uh this is the actual idea which is very good very well reflected in the stoic tradition itself because we have um seneca who was you know this oligarch uh, in, in nero's court we had marcus Aurelius himself who was an emperor and we have epictetus who was uh, a former slave, right? So the, the, the absolutely lowest stratum of the of, of the dense society, uh, which basically uh, reflects on the idea here that it is not what we possess and how much, but our attitude to and what do we want from that and what we what, what we're trying to do with that. Right. How are we going to use our influence, our money, our technology, whatever it is? The Stoics often took this position of, well, things aren't necessarily in themselves good or evil. It depends on how we use it. Yeah, exactly. Basically, not at all good or evil. They're just neutral. They're just there. Uh, and it is us who, who by our actions and, and lack of action, uh, we are we are turning them good or evil. This is basically it. Right. And have have there been things thinking about your shelter in place experience? Have there been positives or some things that you've done with the time that you normally wouldn't have? Uh that's it. Because I'm as a uh, this kind of a freelance person, author, educator, and so on and so on. I, it hasn't changed that much for me, like for my work, because I mostly work uh, remotely <laughs> to begin with, COVID or not. Uh, but uh, I had um, family-wise, I believe. Uh, on the uh, we have we have a daughter. She's almost three years old, and uh, she was you know attending the kindergarten uh, as a very brave three-year-old. <laughs> and then that changed because she had to stay with us yeah. for a month. Then we you know uh the grandparents offered us some help 
uh, and then she went back to the kindergarten and did, did this kind of personal dynamic when you are trying when you're, when you're staying at home and you're trying you're taking care of the daughter but you're also trying to do your work and this changes constantly because this week you go to the kindergarten next week you do not and this kind of personal uh, interpersonal dynamic changing very rapidly uh, on some abstract level taught me a lot about you know how things work in uh, in life this was a very serious experience and very uh, very re rewarding one but also difficult sure a lot of adjustments and especially in the social space yeah adjustments the, the quick uh, succession of very deep readjustments just you know changing uh, constantly uh yeah this was it and then uh and uh, I hope I, I did well. <laughs> time, time will tell. Time will tell, right? Time will tell. But nothing major happened. There was no you know, great collapse. Nothing. There, was no, uh, there was no major problem. So I believe uh, it, it was tiresome. But uh, I think to some extent we succeeded. Right. And to uh, take the stoic idea here that life isn't always a picnic, right? There will be some difficulties and we can work to overcome them the best we can. Which is, yeah, basically 100%. <laughs> yes, of course, this is it. Right. We we don't have Stoicon 2020, no Canada conference this year, but maybe we can look forward to 2021. As far as I know, I didn't look up the details, but as far as I know, it has been pushed to 2021, just as the Tokyo Olympics. So <laughs> this is it, I believe. All right, we'll find out. And modern Stoicism, the organization also thrives, although also online, right? Uh, yes, basically modern modern stoicism LTD. This that's a, you know this kind of a how can I put it network of network, but also a, a team of uh, of guys which I'm you know proud to be a part of, trying to do stoic things as a, a, and kind of uh, you know reviving not just the idea but the school also as a, as an institution which does things like it does the uh, the stoic on every year as a this kind of a conference uh which happens every uh, every every autumn right so uh, and this is a this is a good thing basically because once you are connected to the society of the stoics uh who share i mean once you're connected to whatever the idea is when it, once you're connected to people who 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 share your perspective that you're better off and this is basically what you what you said before that there are you know the, all those facebook groups and so on and so on this is a uh this is very uh kind of rewarding thing right we have some Gre gregory sadler massimo piliucci yeah and there, there there's there's so many of them there is some there is a french guy I, geez I, I forgot his name there is a, there is a blog in french uh and one of the uh there's a blog post in french very long one i can send you the link if you want uh, which is called uh, which is called the, the horizons of this the horizon of this of stoicism or something like that which is basically a kind of a virtual map of what is happening online on facebook on uh, reddit on uh, forums and modern stoicism everywhere it's kind of just trying to put together the list of names of institutions authors and so on so on so on, so on what is happening stoically today and it's a very, very long list, and you, know, you you can't wrap your hand around it around what, what what's happening. So, yes, stoicism is popular, and in a way, internet uh, and serves very well here. And I, uh, for instance, we can talk to each other. Absolutely, and uh, an upcoming documentary was mentioned on the site. So maybe uh, one of us or both of us will be in it in some form. Who knows? <laughs> I need to look that up because I did, I wasn't aware on the modern stoicism site, right? Yes, yes. It's, thanks uh... for <laughs> thanks for letting me know. I just I, I might have missed. And this is this is again a, a pandemic thing because you are because you 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 are uh, especially when you are a parent you have more responsibilities more duties and everything is kind of, kind of more condensed uh, and then you you miss out on certain things like, like this one <laughs> greg sadler says somewhere down the line will likely produce a sort of mini documentary about the rise of interest in contemporary applications and interpretations of stoicism over the last few decades i think i know which uh, which post uh, uh, which post are recording but i didn't <laughs> re read uh, that 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 that, uh, that that I mean I, I missed this one, but I I I, re, I think I I know 
uh, which entry you, you have in mind. So I All right. it up. Thank Good. And wrapping up here, how can listeners find you and your works online? Yeah, I, I created uh, this landing page for Reform Stoicism. Uh, and I believe if you just type in Reform Stoicism, uh, it will lead you directly there because I'm the only one to use that name. So basically Reform Stoicism and you'll find the, the landing site, I believe. All right, good. And social media presence, social networks? Oh, yes, absolutely. I do have this, uh, but it, it, that's, it, I have a, the, this, uh, this profile, but it's in Polish. So, which is, uh, which is basically, <laughs> it's called Sztuka Życia Według Stoików, which is uh, very difficult. Yeah, listeners will, listeners will know that one. I, I will send you the link. I'll yeah, we'll see it in the that show notes. Probably, yes, the show notes. Yes, yes. That's probably, <laughs> that's probably the, the, the way to go. And your book on Amazon and other fine places books are sold? Yes, they, uh, they, there are two books in English on Stoicism that I wrote. Uh, both are with Vernon Press. Uh, one is on Reform Stoicism, as mentioned. And uh, the other one is uh, on stoicism and artistic creativity about the, the problems that they pose to each other. Uh, but uh, probably reform stoicism, if you wanna uh, if you wanna try the first things, then go with reform stoicism. And your email, if listeners want to reach out. Uh, yeah, I can. Do uh, you need me to spell it out? Now yeah, if or... you could spell it out for people who are just listening who won't read the show notes, sure. Uh, it's it's Mikolai Krop dot. Piotr gmail.com which is again maybe, <laughs> the Polish maybe, language maybe, yes <laughs> maybe tricky uh, I believe that the best way is that I, I, I just sent you the, the pack the short pack of the links and you will include that alright very good so listeners make sure to yeah, absolutely. follow but, but the, for, show for, the show for notes all yes. the, for, for everything you might want to know just type in uh, reform stoicism and it will leave you will lead you directly where you are where you should be headed and you'll have all the links in there uh, so and yeah, all you're right. Free to do so. Yeah, thanks for joining me, and we'll be in touch for maybe episode number three. Thank you. That's a fine idea. Thank you. That that's actually a good idea. Thank you very much for having me today. Uh, thanks everyone for listening. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for more content. Visit my website at stoicsolutionspodcast.com for past episodes and social media links. Support my efforts through Patreon or Subscribestar, linked on my website, to receive special perks including having upcoming guests answer your questions, custom podcast episodes, and private one-on-one -on -one calls to discuss whatever you'd like. Visit my other podcast at hurdygurdytravel.com, that's H-U-R-D-Y-G-U-R-D-Y, travel.com, to learn how to make money, save money, and travel the world at next to no cost with credit card rewards, deals, and loyalty programs. Thanks to John Bartman, who offered free consultation and audio edits for episodes 51 through 63. Thanks to Phil Giordana from the symphonic metal group Fairyland, whose music was included in past episodes, but now removed because YouTube has been flagging my videos with copyright claims, even though Phil agreed to share the music. Thanks to generous patrons and fans of this podcast who help support my work. Have a great day.